300 tense correspondents jam the corridor of the old Indian Treaty Building as they file into the conference room for the answer to a history-making question, an answer for which America and the free world have been waiting for six months. The President of the United States, the only man who can answer the burning second-term question, enters. After routine announcements which increase the suspense, he comes directly to the point. Now, I have reached a decision. But I found, as I did so, that there were so many factors and considerations involved that I saw the answer could not be expressed just in the simple terms of yes and no. Some full explanation to the American people is not only necessary, but I would never consent to go before them unless I were assured that they did understand these things, these influences, these possibilities. Moreover, I would not allow my name to go before the Republican Convention unless they under, all the Republicans understood, so that they would not be nominating some individual other than they thought they were nominating. So for both reasons, because I don't know, certainly for certain, that the Republican Convention, after hearing the entire story, want me, I don't know whether the people want me, but I'm going directly to the American people and tell them the full facts. And my answer, within the limits I have so sketchily observed, but um, which I will explain in detail tonight so as to get the story out in one uh, continuous narrative, my answer will be positive, that is, affirmative. The answer has been yes. And then the president faces a barrage of questions. John Steele, Time Magazine. Are you able to tell us within your embargo with whom you discussed this problem? Everybody I thought was my friend and some that I wasn't so sure. <laughs> Morgan, American Broadcasting Company. Sir, no one has been franker than yourself in revealing the state of your health. How would you expect this issue to be handled in the campaign? Well, I hadn't given any thought. But as for my part, I'm going to try to be just as truthful as I can be. And I believe this. Um, I think even uh, people who wouldn't classify themselves probably as my political enemies do believe I'm honest. They may call me stupid, but I think they think I'm honest. <laughs> It's the story of the year, and the rush is on to flash the news to the world. The same evening, from the White House, the President speaks to the people. I have decided that if the Republican Party chooses to renominate me, I shall accept that nomination. Thereafter, if the people of this country should elect me, I shall continue to serve them in the office I now hold. I have concluded that I should permit the American people to have the opportunity to register their decision in this matter. In reaching this conclusion, I have, first of all, been guided by the favorable reports of the doctors. In the last analysis, however, this decision was my own. Even the closest members of my family have declined to urge me to any specific course, merely saying that they would cheerfully abide by whatever I decided was best to do. So if the American people choose, under the circumstances I have described, to place this duty upon me, I shall persist in the way that has been charted by my associates and myself. I shall continue with earnestness, sincerity, and enthusiasm to discharge the duties of this office. The decision has been made, the tension is over, and the First Lady joins a smiling president confidently facing the days that lie ahead.